Today I'm building a barn style door for the shed. I'm Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. So remember I built this little shed to house my garden tools? Right, well it's time to make the door. I started with laying out the wood for the frame. These pieces look like 2x4s, however they're actually ripped from 2x10 framing lumber which enables you to get better quality pieces. I'm going to connect the frame using half lap joints, so making sure everything is straight. The half lap joint is great because it's so simple yet strong, one piece of wood fits halfway into the other piece. There are many ways of making this cut. Using a circular saw makes the job go pretty fast. And uh, a large chisel is helpful in smoothing out the surface. Now that the pieces are cut for the frame, I need two panels to float inside of each window. I decided to make my own panels using basic cheap white wood and this very practical tongue and groove bit on the router. It's uh, quite dusty using the router and I'm using the RZ masks throughout this project to protect myself. It's a good habit to get into always wearing a mask, especially when doing this kind of work. And I really like these ones because they're quite comfortable to wear as you're working, which is important since I'm out here cutting for quite a while. I'm also a fan of the different colors. So if you'd like to try out one of these masks, then use the code DARBINORVER to get a free 3-pack of extra filters when you make your purchase. Okay, now to prepare the wood. First I cut the tongue, and then I simply lowered the bit so the top section hit the middle of the wood and cut the groove. So it's all accomplished with one bit, which is pretty handy. And the wood fits quite snugly together. I wanted the panels to have some definition, so I decided to make my own beadboard lines using a mini plane. This little plane is one of my favorite tools in the shop. So handy. And the rounded corners really help give the wood a much more sectioned off look, where you clearly see each board. Now back to the frame. In order for the panels to float inside the frame, I need a groove on the half lap joint pieces. So I'm using the same bit again, routing a groove all around on the inside. Gluing the panels up is pretty simple since they fit into one another. I think it's really cool that you can make a door with basic lumber like this. A few times the pieces were a touch bowed, but with a little convincing it was fine. Once the panels were dry, I ran the edges on the router again to create a tongue all around. And here it's test fitting time to ensure the door fits into the opening. So the whole piece comes apart like this. And now that I know that the assembled door fits, it's time to glue it together. But first, priming the panels, since these will be free floating and not glued in place, so I want to make sure the tongues especially have some paint on them to protect them from moisture. So the pieces are all ready to be glued up. After fitting in the first panel, I decided to wax all the tongues with some of my mineral oil wax, and this little tip helped so much in order to make it easier to fit the tongues into the grooves. It's important to assemble this in the right order, since once you glue the corners together, that's it. And in order to secure it, I'm drilling two holes and gluing oak dowels in. And this will really pin it in place. It 
It's starting to take shape now. I'm turning it over to glue the other side onto the joints. And to squeeze the tongue and groove in place here, I gently applied some clamping pressure. And last piece in. Then I drilled and glued in two dowels on each connection point. And let me tell you, this door is never coming apart. To clean up the dowels, I'm using a chisel. And I find this technique a lot easier than cutting too close with a flush cut saw. And it produces a really nice and clean finish. I spent a good amount of time sanding this door. I mean, this wood is not the greatest. It's framing lumber, so there were quite a few splinters, etc. So I just want it all pretty smooth. And uh, here you can see I'm sporting my purple mask to protect from the dust. After priming the whole door, I went with a bright red coat of oil paint. And this is one of my favorite paints. It just goes on so smoothly and uh, isn't the color something. I also added two decorative cross sections to complete the barn style look. Now time to connect the hardware. First I'm spraying some screws and bolts here black to match. And I have these gorgeous barn style hinges which are quite large. I really like these hinges, they are really heavy and substantial, so just positioning it right and attaching it to the door. Then I'm securing the accompanying holders onto the door frame. So the pin on the hinge simply slips into the holder. So there's one above and one below, and it opens up nicely. Now once I knew everything fitted right, I removed the hinges in order to add the carriage bolts, which really hold each hinge in place completely. And then reattaching and securing the bolt with a nut on the other side. So time to add the top part holders to the door frame, which fully secures the door to the frame and locks it in place. Then to be able to close the door, I have a black latch here, which matches the hinges nicely. To complete the picture, I made this little sign, which I carved on the CNC machine. It's made out of cedar, and I painted the inside and added some stain to the outside. So it's all looking pretty good. So you thought we're done. We're not done. <laughs> the next day I decided to finish up the shed, namely the organization. And let me give you a little tour. So far I have pegboard on the wall and I created this shelving unit on the side here. So time to fit everything that needs to go in here. It's a small space so it's important to use every area well. This kind of shelving system is great because it's easy to add more shelves if you want to. And you can move them around to fit whatever you're storing. So I'm adding putty and paint related stuff, a drawer with car cleaning things, and the blue box has painting and tiling tools and supplies. Now on the pegboard wall, I'm using these handy little hangers, which I also really like because they're easy to move around and change. Here for example, I'm using two small hooks for the rake, which I access a lot, and I figured it would be quicker and easier to have one larger hook to hang it on instead. I'm also repositioning some other stuff to make room for more tools on the wall. And it's a little bit like laying a puzzle, to fit everything just right. I also got some really nice hooks, which I'm adding to the inside of the door. So the wall is looking pretty good. 
Let's turn around and here are the shelves. Still a little more room left, which is always nice. Finally, I need to fit my small lawnmower and leaf blower in here. Okay, so final walkthrough. It's really easy to access things, which is exactly what I wanted. And I think this is a good example of how you can fit quite a bit in a very small space. If only you organize things and give everything a home, so it's got somewhere to go. really like these hooks on the inside. And I think the shed sign adds a nice finishing touch. You know, just in case I get confused one day and I can't remember what this little house is for. Now, if you missed the first video about building the structure, make sure to check it out. Also, I'll leave links in the description to all the products that I used. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.